Hello lovelies, this is Seuss with another story. This one is by a Tumblr user named The Deity Children. She's written some wonderful things, so please go check her out. Today we will be reading her short story titled Breath of the Sea. Now this is going to be a two-parter. This is part one, and let's jump right in. The cave was hidden on the side of the cliff. He had spotted it one day while out on the sea fishing, but before he'd had the chance to explore, his mother had called him home. Now he returned to the cliff and carefully rowed towards it. It was his day off. Their stores were full, so Mama needed time to prepare the fish. Father had gone off to the bar to spend some time with friends and hadn't bothered to give him a task before leaving. With his new freedom, he snuck out of the house and ran all the way down to the bay. He tied his boat to one of the rocks, his fingers expertly forming the knots. He stepped back and admired his handiwork, giving his fingers a little wiggle as he did so. Then, with more trepidation, he began to climb the few feet up the cliff. His arms ached as they hauled his body up, but it wasn't that much harder than a day of rowing. He winced each time the rock crumbled before him, and his breath came out in short gasps. He could hear the splashes of water each time another rock fell, and his brain imagined the splash his body would make. Finally, he managed to pull his body up into the cave, and he collapsed onto the ground. His eyes fluttered closed as he breathed. The bird in his chest slowly retreated, and he opened his eyes. Standing up, he looked down at where he had come from and smiled. He cupped his hands around his mouth and wordlessly hollered out into the sea. He had made it! He was in this cave that surely no one else had explored before. He was here. Then he turned around and faced the dark maw of the cave. He took the flashlight out of his pocket and flicked it on, its dim light piercing into the cave. Forward he went, the call of adventure driving his feet forwards. The floor of the cave was wet and slippery, probably from waves crashing into it. The whole place smelled of salt and dust, and he had to blink some tears out of his eyes and cough some dust out of his lungs. He continued through the cave carefully, roaming his eyes across the walls as he walked. The markings on the walls were almost hypnotic, and he traced their spiraling patterns with his fingers. They were cool underneath his fingers, and smooth in a way he forgot rocks weren't supposed to be. Entranced, he followed the pattern, his fingers twisting and turning as he continued on its path. What are you doing here? A voice snapped him out of his, whatever it was, and he turns to see a young girl glaring at him. She looks maybe two years younger than him, and holds a sharpened stone threateningly in his direction. Her ripped white dress trails behind her on the ground. What are you doing here? He echoes her, backing away instinctively and hitting the wall. He bares his teeth at her and raises his arms to defend himself. This isn't your cave, the girl states, and her eyes flash with warning. So what? It's yours? He spits back, for of course someone else will have claimed his discovery. Of course he couldn't have this thing to himself. Mama would shake her head at his useless endeavors when he returned home, and the kids in the town would laugh at his stories. No. No, it's not, the girl whispers, and shivers travel up his spine. Leave. But his fingers have touched the carvings again. And isn't it wonderful? He continues on and on and on, and he must find the end. In the end, he will finally understand every swirl and twist of it. His feet begin to move, and his fingers lightly trace the lines. Is that chanting he hears? Those whispers in the wind? His own mouth is moving. Is he the one saying those words? The girl screams and yells and she's interrupting the beautiful song. No matter, he can drown her out. And another voice joins his own. There are no words, only sounds. And then the girl slaps him across the face. He stumbles and falls to the ground. She stands over him, breathing heavily, and eyes wide with terror. And looming over her are two beady eyes and a mouth full of silver knives. Run! The girl heaves. And this time he does not hesitate. He scrambles to his feet and sprints away. He reaches his hand back and feels the girl grasp it desperately. Behind them, the thing lets out a horrible screech that rattles the cave. 
dust and tiny rocks fall down onto their heads. He cannot see in the darkness. He has dropped his flashlight a while ago. He does not know which way to go, and his feet slip on the wet rock. The girl quickly steadies him, and he latches onto their joined grasp. She passes him and pulls him along, and he allows himself to trust her. She knows the way out. Sunlight breaks through the darkness as the exit appears up ahead. If he had any breath to spare, he would have shouted in relief. But as he was, he could barely stumble to the opening. It was only then he realized he was still trapped. Behind him, he could hear the monster banging against the walls, shaking them as it grew closer. He could almost feel the snapping of its jaw as it, as it crunched his bones. Jump! The girl orders him. And before he can protest, because that will kill him, she is pulling him along. He cannot hear the sound his body makes when it hits the water. Liquid fills his mouth and his screams bubble out. He is sinking, sinking. He can remember as a child Mama bringing him to the beach. She had set him in the sand and told him to stay. He had fidgeted restlessly as he wished to go play, but did as she said. The waves had lapped at his feet over and over again, in a rhythm that had lulled him to sleep. He could still remember the lullaby of the sea. He opened his eyes and floated to the surface. He breathed in and out the water. Next to him, he could see the little girl sinking deeper and deeper, so he grabbed her arm and pulled her up with him. They broke through the water, and the girl gasped for air next to him. She grabbed hold of the boat and pulled herself up into it with his help. She reached down and pulled him up after her. Even when he left the sea, he could still feel it, rolling in his gut and humming in his fingers. Every breath he took tasted of fresh, salty air. In the cave, the monster roared and burst out into the light. And that's all I have for you today. Please remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell, leave a comment. As always, I will respond to every single comment that is below this video. And I will see you next time. Have a lovely day.